guys, I'm back with another video. This time I'm talking all about cross-pollinating your dahlias. We're talking about choosing a father, pollinating a mother, and uh, having a little bit more of a control over uh, the subsequent generation. So if you have a small backyard like me and you're relying on bees to do the work, you're gonna have a pretty low success rate of dahlias that you might wanna grow again. This is how you really, really increase your odds of getting something really special from your dahlia seeds. A lot goes into it though. It does take a bit of time and does take a little bit of planning. What I wanted to show you is one, how you actually do the pollination. But I also wanna show you what goes into the decisions I make as to what parents I choose. Beside me is Winky Pat. You can see I've got my organza bags over it. And I originally was planning on using this in some of my crosses this season. However, it's just not that great of a plant here in Queensland. Uh, problems being is that there's a little bit of powdery mildew. Uh, there's mite damage on it here. If I snap this off, mites, uh, you know, it produces a beautiful flower, but problem being, uh, it's just not that strong of a plant for my conditions. Another example of that, if we come over here, this is Dahlia Robin Hood, and it looks terrible, I know. Bear in mind that we did get a thousand mil of rain in a couple of days, and pretty much everything got knocked around. But some did better than others. As you can see, we've got more mite damage on this one, powdery mildew coming through, stems are so flimsy on it, all sorts of problems going on. I have bagged the uh, heads, but I'm just not gonna waste my time by keeping these gen genetics going uh, within my garden. But let's move on. Now to show you what I do like. <laughs> Here, Turavel Moonglow, the gold standard of Queensland bred dahlias. As you can see, it's a huge plant, um, great stems, uh, long stems as well. It is, they are getting a little bit shorter at this point in the season. Uh, it's a beautiful flower. I just, you can't knock it. There's a few little spots of uh, mildew, unfortunately, and then a few little uh, bits of mite damage, but compared to the last two we looked at, totally different. So this is a very strong plant with a beautiful flower. So it is gonna go through into my uh, seedling parents. Now the other one, this is an unknown plant here, but we are thinking, my sister and I are thinking it's actually uh, Glenmark Sophia. Now, this is bagged, this is ready to go. The first step you need to do if you do want to breed your dahlias, when they get to the point, say maybe around here, uh, now is a really, really good time. You get your organza bags and you just slip it over. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna stop any bees from getting in before you can. And I've been bagging both the males and the female flowers uh, I've been using because I have been finding that even though um, you don't necessarily need to bag the male parents you're gonna use, um, you'll have a lot more pollen if you do because the bees won't beat you to it. So once they get to around this stage, just imagine we've got a bag on what is going on here is we're having our first pollen presentation. This one isn't particularly ripe, but around this stage, you can see the petals are already wanting to fall out. I remove all my petals. And the reason being is one, it lets you see what you're doing. And two, um, if it does rain and you've got this huge massive flower, um, well, petals or ray florets, um, you are asking for rot. So, once I get to around that stage, uh, it will continue ripening. In here, in the center, we've got our pollen presentation, but the majority of what you can see here are stigmas. So if I pluck one out to show you, see that little Y there? If I show it against my... This is the female part of the flower. This is what the pollen is gonna go on to. So we've got our head here. Let's find some pollen to pollinate it with. And going back to the other plant that I said was nice and strong. Here, this is, this is a great example. 
Someone described to me pollen as um, Cheeto dust and I couldn't agree more. So this season what I've been doing, so if I just remove these petals, and then I have a nice uh, dry palm. I just, I've been just kind of sprinkling <laughs> the, the pollen onto my palm like this. I don't know if that picks up on the camera, but uh, I have got nice little dusting of pollen on my hand. Now, some people use paintbrushes and they, they dust it onto um, paper. I know um, uh, that is quite a popular method. This is the quick and dirty Peter Mason method and um, it certainly works for me. So if I come around here, we've got all our Ys, which are our stigmas. And then I'm just going to just gently just spread it all over. Once that is done, we need to put our bag back on. I'll just steal this bag for now. And I'm gonna repeat that uh, over the next couple of days, um, just to ensure that it is fully pollinated and more and more of the female parts will be exposed and I'll just keep on coming back to it. Now, coming over here, I guess some people might see that and just say, oh, that just seems too easy. That seems too good to be true, but Look, the proof is in the pudding. If we come to this one, here's one I've been doing over the last couple of days. And you can see all of the female parts have now dried up. It's starting to get Yay! hard in the center and seeds are being produced. I'm gonna leave that on the plant for as long as possible. Actually, you know, unless there's rain coming, uh, I wanna leave it on for at least a month. Um, leave, leave the bud on the plant for at least a month, just to ensure that I get really, really ripe seeds on there. If it's three weeks in and there's a heap of rain coming, you might want to cut them early to avoid any possible rot. But um, the longer, the better, especially if you've got a bag, because if it does begin to open and drop the seeds, they're just going to go in the bag anyway. So that's what I've been doing here in my garden for um, pollinating uh, my dahlias. And I hope you find it useful.